Uh, people realize that Blackwell is just a home run. MV Link 72 is a home run architecture. We designed it to be a thinking machine, a reasoning AI system. And I think people now, the confluence of the, 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 the breakthrough in reasoning AI and the availability, the, you know, the, the now the emergence of, of Grace Blackwell, MV Link 72, perfect timing. I think that that's at the core, uh, a big part of it. And the second part of it is that our supply chain is growing and we're really ramping it up and they're doing fantastically for us. Uh, and so all of there's so much coming in this video. But first, if you get value from our content, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button to stay one step ahead with real time insights, NVIDIA price targets and market moving news. Yeah, I guess so. But, you know, you just can't you can't uh, underestimate the importance of the China market. This is the second largest AI market. This is the home of the world's largest population of AI researchers. And we want all of the world's AI researchers and all of the world's developers to be building on American stacks. And so, you know, irrespective of, of the near term uh, revenue success that we have, we can't ignore the fact that the Chinese market is very important. NVIDIA has long been seen as the poster child for artificial intelligence. Wall Street seeing it as a pulse check on the health of the AI ecosystem. However, there is more of the AI trade, of course, that investors may be overlooking. DVX Ventures CEO John McNeil, McNeil is joining us now with a closer look. And in addition to being in venture capital, John, you all helped co-found an ETF that helps also look for these opportunities. So I guess... You know, NVIDIA has obviously dominated this trade along with a handful of other names. Before I ask you for specifics, I'm curious sort of how you're framing it when you're looking for these opportunities. What criteria are you using? What growth areas within AI are you looking at? Yeah, during um, during my time at Tesla and Lyft and, and other stops in my career, I had some responsibility for building data centers. And so what we did was we took the build sheet of a data center, an AI data center, which is actually quite different than your regular data center. It's got a lot more fiber and a lot more power, obviously. And um, we took that build sheet and said, if you were going to build a stock portfolio out of this, what would it look like? And it turns out that NVIDIA is a super small minority of what gets put into an AI data center. Um, and so we wanted to give investors access to what the real AI infrastructure uh, profit pool is. And that includes everything from the power generation to the power electronics, to the cooling, to the substrates, to the networking software that has all these chips talking to each other, et cetera. And so that's really how we formulated uh, this ETF called AIS. And, and walk me through that product, John. What, what are some of the names in that in that vehicle, in that product? Well, you can imagine, uh, like I would just start from the power source. You've got uh, GE Vernuvo and others who are providing the gas turbines that are powering these data centers. As you know, uh, the utilities and the grid can't respond fast enough to demand. And so, uh, these large AI data, data centers are finding their own sources of power and they're putting that power in quickly and that's in the form of natural gas turbines. Uh, then that connects to power electronics that transform that electricity so that the data center can use it. Uh, those are provided by companies like AVB. Uh, and then you come inside the data center and the data center, an AI data center has four times the fiber that a normal data center does and corning is a name uh, that is really benefiting off of all that fiber. Uh, and then you've got uh, network providers, substrate providers. Uh, we have a list of about 60 stocks uh, in, the, in the AIS ETF that contribute to that build of an AI data center and the profit pools that are within that. And, and I'm curious, when you're thinking about your private investments as well, if you're applying some of the same criteria, if you're thinking about it in the same way. Yeah, we tend to think about it in a holistic way and start to look at uh, places that people don't often uh, don't often look at first. And as you mentioned, uh, Nvidia gets a lot of the headlines here, as does Marvell and some of the other chip suppliers. Um, but when you when you open the aperture and say, okay, what really is involved in this super cycle of AI and the build out of the infrastructure around AI? Then it really broadens to a whole different series of stocks that investors can. Uh, can participate in and, and participate in the super cycle. And as we've seen through the last couple of weeks of earnings, the large hyperscalers, Microsoft, Amazon, 
uh, Oracle, uh, et cetera, are all confirming their uh, their previously announced AI infrastructure investments. So if this, if anything, this is not slowing down, uh, and uh, and the long term commitments remain. Um, as the market is shifting to more and more demand and inference, as Jensen Wong referenced uh, this week in his earnings. Uh, John, I want to switch gears here a little bit because you, you are the, the former Tesla president, and Tesla is certainly in the news. Uh, RoboTaxi is on the way, John, as you know, in Texas, coming up here shortly. I'm just curious, John, as you think about Tesla's advantages in that market, how, we, how would you think about that? How would you frame that it, as it goes head to head with Waymo, which of course right now is far ahead? Yeah, Waymo's got, uh, got you know, it's 10 million rides now under their belt. Uh, they're the market leader. Tesla's going to uh, launch with what Elon describes as, as around 10 cars in a limited uh, street map in Austin, which I think I applaud. That's the right way to start. Start with safety first and make sure that the passenger's safe is the primary uh, is the primary objective. But your question on what advantages they have, Tesla's got a lot of cars on the road. Uh, uh, they've got millions of cars in the car park. They're gathering a ton of data. Uh, and additionally, uh, Elon's got one of the biggest GPU clusters in AI. Uh, he's got a 100,000 GPU cluster uh, AI data center outside of Memphis. He mentioned last week uh, that they're now trying to build a million uh, GPU cluster uh, gigawatt uh, AI data center. And so that data is flowing into some of the most powerful compute in the world. And so that's a real, uh, that's a real series of advantages Tesla has. But as the head of uh, autonomy at Tesla described last week publicly, he feels like they're a couple of years behind, uh, behind Google of Waymo. And, um, and that's probably right. They've got some, some real ground to catch up because it's much different uh, running uh, driver assistance software than it is running a driverless car. Well, and I'm also curious where you come out on the whole sensors versus cameras argument, you know, the kind of technologies um, that each company is employing, because all the data in the world is great, but you still have, you have a piece of hardware that it has to, to power and that has to be safe. So do you have any, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I'll kind of give you both sides of the argument. The one side of the argument, and this has been Elon's uh, mantra, is that humans drive cars with two eyes. And uh, and so a car with eight eyes is going to do better uh, with full-time attention on the road. That's, uh, that's really the Tesla position. On the other hand, there are reasons why uh, the others, uh, Waymo, and the leading Chinese autonomous companies have applied both radar and LIDAR in addition to cameras. And that's because our eyes can't see well through glare. Our eyes don't see through the dark. Our eyes don't see around corners uh, and our eyes don't see well around weather. And uh, cameras have that same challenge. They don't see well through glare, through weather, through the dark, around corners. LIDAR and radar uh, do. And so uh, from a safety perspective, there's the argument to be made that you really do need those extra sensors.